Okay, I think I'll start with the pull request the last week. And um, Webhav uh, was able to look through the code and also um, suggest changes. So the most of the changes are basically with the way um, the names are you know, the names of the functions and stuff. I think all of them are uh, about you know like moving things or moving things in terms of you know moving a code to a, a function in itself and renaming the function, but. Um, there was one interesting uh, bit which I really liked, and um, it was about this public class endpoint. So, what endpoint is basically do? Oh, it was doing um, previously was I'll switch over and. So what it previously was doing is it's just uh, a collection of, you know, the sync URL where the event will be sent and the type of event, uh, which is, you know, job started or job ended and queue started and stuff like that. And then it had the sent method in here, which, you know, I remember last time I mentioned in the meeting that this is a not, this is not the right place to put that code and I do want to move it. I was thinking about where, what class can we implement. So, um, I then had, I was working on just, you know, moving this around and thinking what we can do with it. So I then had an idea of what we can do is, um, do you guys see my uh, IDE? Yes, uh, no, we so we see GitHub, I think. Oh. <laughs> Screen share every week. <laughs> um, I think it should work now. Do you guys see it now? Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, so I will go to, so what I sort of thought of doing was I moved endpoint to just represent the sync URL and the event because the endpoint is going to be a collection of, um, you know, the sync where an event will be sent to and the event type itself. So a user can um, go into the UI and select the type of the event and then also to select the, the URL where that will be sent to. And I moved, uh, where is it? Okay, oh yes. So there's this um, sync class right here inside of HTTP sync, which is, so there's this abstract class of cloud event sync. Um, and this basically what it can do is allow users to configure different kinds of sync other than just HTTP sync. So I moved the method of sending the event itself to this HTTP sync um, class. So what this is going to do is just use, you know, a post. Um, so it's going to have, it's going to get that particular object um, from from a stage class and stage is basically what's what will be triggered as soon as like a person selects okay this is an item that I've selected and then this is an enumeration and it's going to you know build build those models and then send it back using it's going to check what kind of event or what kind of sync um, it's selected and this is going to send the cloud event to um, the HTTP sync and the HTTP sync is where the method is. Um, but one sort of, uh, a, not a problem, but it's more a UI thing. Oh, I think it's uh, And I, I kind of want to change it, but I think it might look unclean on um, the on the user side. So right now it's just over here, you know, uh, so a person can choose one sync. And within that sync, they can choose um, the the endpoints and the events that they want to send to. So, you know, they can either click all events and they can have this deleted, or they can choose a specific events to be sent to specific endpoints. Um, you know, maybe something like users two, and then select that I just want to receive a job created event here. But what I was thinking ideally it would be nice if user had the ability to configure multiple syncs and then inside each syncs have, um, you know, have this option where they can configure different um, events and different endpoints. But I think that's, I, I tried creating that on a clone of this uh, plugin so it doesn't mess up with the UI of this one. Um, and it, 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 it 
wasn't really working because the gel, I was not able to quite figure out the jelly for this. Um, and I'm thinking of moving to just using in a movie scripts because they might be a cleaner way. Um, and so, you know, a person would be able to select HTTP sync and then maybe select another type of sync. Uh, and I kind of wanted to hear from you guys that like what ability should user have here? Because I think that the user might want to configure two different kinds of sync at one time. And with an each sync, they might want to configure different um, events or endpoints. So I'm curious on here from hearing what you guys or, or like what you guys think. From my side, I think that this looks good. In general, what I tend to see happening is that people will want to send multiple events to the same sync, right? So it should be easier to select multiple events there when you have event. I would make that events and basically mm -hmm. an array of events that are going to be sent to that sync. Okay, so- So you don't, so you don't need to configure like every event that you can possibly send uh, to a sync. Right, and this should be like a multi-select, is that what you're saying? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think okay. so. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this came up last time too. And I think the reason why I kept it this way was um, I what I feel is that it will allow users to sort of have modularity over the kind of um, events that each sync receives. So that particular sync is just configured to receive like job created events. So as soon mm -hmm. as receives an event from Jenkins, it knows that it's a job created event. So it knows what to do and go ahead without really like parsing through um, the either the headers, if it's a binary structured cloud event or parsing through the body, if it's like a structured um, cloud but, event. Sorry, but, that's, but that's the thing about events, right? Like usually you're, what you're going to do is you're going to send it to a broker that doesn't know exactly who is going to consume that. Right, mm -hmm. and here you are assuming that you know you are sending it to uh, an endpoint that knows what event is, is supposed to receive, right? So I think that's kind of like the difference. In general, I would say you are sending it somewhere. You don't know what that something is going to do with the event, and you need to allow like people who is configuring this to say, okay, I want to send all these kind of things, like these so it, things. It, it it does have that option, right? You could you could pick event event all 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 events. Yeah, but yeah, but then all of the events mentioned here will go. And I think in terms of like, yeah. multi like it would just be like, I just want to receive created, left, completed. Is that I am? I, 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 I see. So, so yes. Hmm. Um, I mean, the, the, I, I, I agree with the, the overall, um, the, the, the overall feedback that the, this could to, to, to do add endpoint and then and then you know enter your sync URL and then select the event if you're if you're doing lots of them that would get kind of cumbersome I, I've done a jelly UI like, like that before and it's it's not fun to set up oh no it's not <laughs> it's um, not I, but what's the, the multi select is would that how, would that work so I so, so I mean it, it it could be something as simple as instead of having a drop down, all of the events are listed with check boxes. Mm. I mean, it would it would make each thing kind of kind of kind of long, but you could then you could see you know you'd have a checkbox for all events, then you'd have a checkbox for. In fact, in fact, you could have have a checkbox for all events that's checked initially, and then when you uncheck it, then um, mm. you see the other ones, and you can individually check them. And then so you see yeah. them all right there. You can see which ones are checked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I think it, that might be a better configuration. Um, and Mauricio, do you think that having like, if we like all difference between that all events and sort of giving the users the ability to select multiple events, um, you know, for the, the configured sync, uh, like, you know, what you were saying earlier that it should be the job of the sync to sort of figure out what they want to do with the events. So when we send them all events, they have complete, you know, um, ability to see what events they have received and then work through it or, or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, I would say that the sync is the one responsible for dealing with all the events that you're sending, right? Like. And even to reject the events that you're sending, right? Like the sync can be configured, like the broker can be configured to say, you know, I want to filter these types because I'm not interested in 
in some of those types. But I think that like my point was more about like to make like the, the life of the user like easier, like on, on the setup side. And also imagine that if you have a sync with security parameters, when you need to configure tokens and stuff, you don't want to do that multiple times for every event, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's, that's kind of like where I am, right? Like I just don't want to configure mm -hmm. it once for a sync and then just move forward. I, I, I do do think that there could be value in, in being able to, to select which events you, you send to the sync. Like, like, for instance, I might only be interested in, in job completed and job failed, and my sync is running on AWS, so I, I have to pay more money if, if I process lots of stuff, and I, I maybe maybe don't want to send stuff I'm not going to process. So that, that that does seem interesting, although, I mean, if, if, if we didn't have it, people would probably still use it. Right. Yeah, I think that, it's, yeah. Right. I tend to agree. I mean, as soon as you send everything, kind of like the sync will be able to filter as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Is it, is it worth uh, spending time on the filtering mechanism on the on the clients and this guy's like on the producer? Maybe it does. I think that it, like a checkbox, like a list with checkbox, I think that that, that will do the work for now. It, it, it might be fine in, in this case. The, the example I'm thinking of, um, that, that GitHub auto status plugin, um, I added um, events for test cases. So it, it would send something for every test case that passed succeeded. And it's a lot of data. And um, so, so people asked me to, to, to not make that the default. But, but it was also writing them to a database. And so your database gets huge. And so, mm -hmm. so in that case, there were reasons why you might not want to actually send them. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that's true here. I, I mean, if the if the sync just rejects them and doesn't do anything with them, it's, these are all probably really small. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can actually show around the um, the event body as well. Um, and also, I think you know the the conversation about um, structured versus binary. I think for you know because it's being sent to external systems. I think it's a better idea to have it have constructed in a binary manner because that way, you know, on the external system is much easier able to figure out through the headers what they want to do with that going through the body and then, uh, you know, testing everything. So, well, so the events that, that are here right now are uh, job created, updated, job entered the queue, job left the queue and it started, it completed, and um, job finalized, job failed. Uh, so right now, I think because it, we are going to be probably looking at, uh, or we are not, I can I can try configuring one and then seeing what happens when uh, job is configured. job updated so and then i can also try running it now so it should receive all events regarding if they run so finally we should also fail oh it's i think it didn't receive the hmm. Oh, oh yes, it might have not received the job failed. I'll, I'll look into it. Um, but this is sort of you know what happens when all the events are gonna go. So I am thinking of increasing the payload in terms of adding more information. So there's also gonna be information about uh, the user since I'm not logged in right now. So there's the user is not. Um, but but yes, the payload might increase when there are artifacts involved, when there are parameters inside of the job. So I do think I have been thinking about how we can configure the UI so it's both useful as well as it's uh, it makes the most sense in terms of interoperability between different systems. So and I do um, like the idea of having you know like checkboxes for the events and then just like one single instead of a repeatable where you have to enter the sync URL and the event. 
So, um, something, something maybe not for now, but to, to keep in mind is the idea that maybe when you're sending cloud events, you want to configure, uh, you know, these things and the events, kind of like you want to probably decorate the events with some extra metadata, right? Sometimes you want to add something to the cloud event uh, as an extension or an extra field or something, for, for example, in the, in the headers. So the sync can do filtering based on that, right? So for example, in this mm -hmm. case, you can send maybe the job name as a, as a header. Uh, I'm not seeing any headers there, like you just have type of, of event, so right? And you, source. So do you see my, yeah, so there, yeah. there's the, do you see my um, US yep. code right there? And do you yeah, see, see like what headers are? Yep. So, so yeah, the but, ID is in the UUID right now. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think we can also send name, but I, uh, I, what I, I, the reason I think I didn't do it because when we are sending multiple events and uh, it's receiving like the, there are several events with the same um, ID. I think there, I think cloud events, there was um, something about cloud events for the event ID or like the CID to remain unique, but I'll look mm -hmm. into it then. Um, and I can change it to job name instead. Uh, I think that the ID is fine, right? Like the ID needs to be there, right? Like you need to have an ID for the event. So that's perfect. But what I would like to see, for example, is then if you can get the job name from kind of like the job in Jenkins mm -hmm. and then send that because then, then you have a way to say from the sync side, I, I'm really interested in the you know job builds for this specific job name and not for all the jobs that you can have in Jenkins. Mm -hmm. You and, see that? Yes, and that should go inside the headers. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that we need you, you need to choose wisely which of the parameters you want to promote to the headers so the syncs will be able to filter without like actually going and parsing the body of the event. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yes. Yes, I think um yeah, that that's, that makes sense. And that's also um, you know, one of the benefits of using just like a binary format. Exactly, because yeah. Easier to look for information here. So yes, I think that's a, that's a really good idea. And I'll move the critical information which identifies that particular object outside from the body. I, I mean, in the body as well, but also inside of headers. Exactly. Yeah, both. I think yeah. if you have it in the body and you can promote some of those very important things to the header, I think that it will make a lot of sense. Yes. Um. So, and and. And in terms of selecting the sync type itself, should there also be uh, a way for users to configure multi, like two or three type of syncs at the same time? Can you repeat the question? So if you have multiple syncs? Yes, like sync type. So like someone has HTTP sync, a TCP sync, and then maybe some other kinds of sync. And they wanted to, so at once, I just want to configure all those three things. Like I'm just, at, I'm maybe just thinking of would the user need to configure three different or two different sync types at the same time? Because right now, the easier option on like for Jelly uh, to me was just having a simple drop down and I can choose either, either an HTTP sync or other sync at one time. Like I feel that, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. You usually want to configure like, uh, but because the syncs are going to have all uh, different configuration parameters, I think that it's good like as it is right now, right? So mm -hmm. depending on the sync type, you're going to be able, you need, you will need to show kind of like different, uh, you know, configurations parameters. And that's what I think that at the end of the day, you will need to have that kind of like a structure that you have now. Okay. Type mm -hmm. and then based on the type you choose the parameters that you need to configure, right? Like let's say that it's the message queue or something like that. Mm -hmm. You will need a URL, probably a user as well, like a password or some credentials of some sort. Right. But for, na for now, I think that what you have is, is perfect. I mean, I think that you should keep it like that and uh, until we, you know, we figure out a little bit better more what, what, what we need there. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Um, I will also, move into a little bit of um, like the just the changes that I had done was just adding an item listener um, and a queue listener. And um, 
as I said, all of them are basically just going into this stage class, which then decides what to sort of do with um, the with the event that it's or not with the event, but the the sort of object it's receiving. Um, and there was one thing here that I also sort of wanted to talk about was um, so as you can see that there's you know there's handle build which is basically handling you know a, a job started ended that's sort of like a one run or one build I think I should name it maybe handle run but I then because at that time build made more sense to me um, and then there's handle queue and then there's handle item. Um, and all of them are basically in the same class and they also are using, you know, the, the payload inside of this same like class. So the build job model, which is um, which the item listener. So, um, you know, job updated, job created, and also the, um, the build listener. So stage has started, it has completed and finalized. So this is what both of those stages are using. And then there is, uh, wait, did I? Oh, and this is okay. Well, this is the same methods, but with different parameters because both are sending sort of different. And then there's the um, Q model, which is basically building like the Q model. And I, I'm going to be adding, you know, more um, fields to it. So I was maybe thinking that is is this single class the, you know, should instead of having this single class, maybe if I can move into, you know, a build stage for Q, build stage for um, job, like, you know, into different numerations and that way, maybe we can have more flexibility in, in terms of, um, you know, this, this particular, for example, function, it's just sort of, it's not the best function right now. It's it, it works, but I I think that I can maybe make it more um, sort of function in a better way because if you're looking into, for example, should send build, um, there is the the failed which might not have worked this time, and I think that that's the reason because it's all in the same stage. It might make things a little bit unclear because there might be different stages for each of you know a build or a job. Um, but if I, if it does make sense to you guys, do you think that instead of having like a single stage, which is just doing the work for all the listeners of sending events and, you know, should send that event and then building the model, should it be divided into maybe, um, you know, different stages for different objects? <coughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, I think that it makes a lot of sense to split that functionality up, right? Uh, if you if you split it up, uh, then you will be able to extend it later on if you if you need more stages, right? right. Now you have like the enum there, right? Yes, this is, um, so I'm yeah. just thinking having like a different enums for um, like, you know, entered waiting and it left is basically uh, functionalities for a queue and created and updated our functionalities for a particular like job itself and started completed and finalized our functionalities for a run of a job. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking of moving this to a different enum and then moving this to a different enum and inside of um, the listener classes, I would just have like stage queue dot created or something like that. Um, and then have specific methods because I think like having what the having enums is making one thing easier, which is just, uh, you know, if should send info to a particular like should that sync be receiving this particular event and then like building it. So I think it's simple like using an enum is simplifying some things, but I still want to split this enum into maybe two or three or four or however many enums, which um, the however many different listeners. I but another another implementation would be just putting you know more sort of you know uh, maybe computer um, added you know and then I would have another uh, sort of listener which would be a computer listener and it would just call something like stage uh, uh, computer added or whatever the function which is going to handle that which is going to does that does that make sense. It does make sense to me. Yep, yeah, it does make sense. But again, try not to over optimize before having code. I think that, uh, like like you mentioned before, right? Like when you see like that the class and the enum is getting too big, 
then it's very definitely like a, a you know the point to split it up do not split up just because you know you you think that it's going to be nicer i think i would say that just let's do it whenever it's it's needed and i think that you just found kind of like the right moment now to do it because it's becoming mm -hmm. more and more complex and you you know you can you know now how you kind of like know now and you just see how how it needs to be split right mm -hmm. so that's usually an indication that you can be you can do it now Okay, but don't thanks. over split it yeah yes yes that's a, yeah maybe i was basically thinking of um like keeping items together you know so items in terms of like job um like uh, job created updated in queue i think that might be a good implementation since there's some similarity between the event um you know uh, parameters and stuff like that so i think that's what i'm going to probably do um would would the different listeners that handle the, the the different enums would they have different behaviors really, or is it more like cl like classifying like things together? Um. Yeah. So in in terms of behavior, it's more um what what her so okay I'll sh show around the listener classes and just um so here's the job listener which is um. I see over like three different parameters and then it has this handle build method so the and then there's the item listener which is sending item of class of like type item listener from listeners and then there's the queue listener which is basically sending item which is a different kind of item so this item is basically like a queue item so when i go on to the item class uh you know i have all these methods so there's the handle item and this one is for uh, a job created and job updated. And then there's a handle queue, which is using an item, but it's a different kind of item. And what this is basically, most of the functionality is same as you can see, it's just going through all the, like the for loop and the if and the try statement, the, the try statement. But the one thing is like that building of the payload and what needs to be put inside that payload is also, you know, it's different and it's all happening inside of this particular enum. Um, and as I said, it's also going to see whether or not a particular um, sync is configured to receive that kind of event. So this is what this particular um, function here is doing, which is which is only different for job type. It's similar for handle queue and it's similar for job started and job or job created and job uh, updated. Um, also, there's another, oh yes, and then, you know, we have this, the building of the model, which is also um, happening inside of, inside of this. And then it's going to basically check if the sync type is, again, an HTTP sync, then it is going to go into um, this class and then configure. So this is like, it's going to build a cloud event. It's, this is the abstract class um, implementation where it's just using the HTTP standard method like a post to send that message to, uh, to, the, to the sync, an HTTP sync. Uh, so I'm just thinking because yes, this particular enum, it does have its benefit that, you know, it does, it's, it's like pretty similar for some things like this method I'm, I can use into another listener, which is like the computer listener as well. I had looked into it, but yes it might sort of make the class really big and might co um, complicate the process because then i have to if i go back to um job list or not job list, http sync i am you know doing this kind of if else just to just to see um what information is being received and then i can add that type and then um, add that type is used for the cloud event header um, so there is both, you know, a good side and a bad side to using it. And I'm right now just evaluating the, the cost, sort of like the pros and cons of both the implementations. Um, I had also tried splitting them up, uh, but, <laughs> but then I moved them together. I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try and see how complicated yeah. stage before I want to move it. <laughs> can 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 you um go go back to like the the job one that you were just showing the job listener um yeah yeah the, well the one the one where where you were build, building you're building like an um, identifier um okay, okay so um 
So what, one thing that comes to mind, and, and this is just a suggestion, and it I, I haven't looked at the code, so it may not even make sense. But um, if, if 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 you had an like an interface that all of the models uh, um, had to implement, and one of the methods on the interface was something like um, get um, get type, then um, every model would have its own implementation of get type that could re re return like um whatever is appropriate so for a job it's either the phase or the status where for a queue it's the status and um you might if you did something like that you you might be able to get rid of some of these if checks and and let the fact that it's that each model implements the, the get type function handle it um I, I don't know if it like makes the code simpler or, or or more difficult but it's just just something to consider yeah, no, I think that's a really good idea. And um, I think, yeah, that's, um, that's maybe what I'm going to do, because even with, you know, all of these um, sort of models. Uh, yeah, like, like, there's also some sort of like common um, listeners, which are using like, the job model there, I think two listeners which are using the same job model. So just having that, you know, so one of them has like a created update and the other one is using a beta bit. So I think that having that sort of implementation might help in um, differentiating what needs to go for what listener and for what type. I think that's a, that's a really good idea that we should implement. In fact, it, I guess it, it maybe wouldn't even have to be get type, it, it, it could be, yeah, well, yeah, get get type so it could return the whole string like job underscore whatever. Um, and anyway, um, also you, you have the code working and and um, so so if that doesn't add a lot of value and simplify the code, we should we should move on. But just just like to add things to think about. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. That's no. That's actually that's a really good idea and. Um, yeah, I think I might, I might like try and see what it, it it does, and if that simplifies, I'm definitely going to do that because you know, as as we add more listeners, we'll have to mo do more of these else if statements because then it's going to be listener of type, um, you know, like a, a a computer model, and then you know more and more models. <laughs> so so we might have to do that in in the future and. Um, then I'm going to move on to tests. And again, this test really needs to be simplified and be, be broken down into um, simpler, like into more modular tests rather than like one big test. Uh, because again, this is going to be testing a lot of functionality. So right now I have two tests basically. And I'm actually not sure about this first do check global config. I am not sure if this is the right way to go, but but um, I wrote it earlier and I was like, okay, I'm going to check if it works. So it does work. But again, so this is what this is doing is just basically checking all the global config parameters and if they're setting all right. And what this uh, check SyncURL is doing is basically running a uh, form validation um, on the SyncURL. So, you know, it shouldn't be it should only be HTTP. It should it should not be like no um, for like the HTTP kind. And this is doing the checking for you know the parameters and um, just null or equal and stuff. I'm not sure again if this is the right way to go, but I, I've been looking into other like global config tests and. Um, seeing how they have implemented it. So maybe in the future there, this will probably would have changed or this would have probably changed. Um, and then there's the stage test. And this test is basically checking that um, for each event type, I'm only sending that particular event and no other event. So, um, you know, as I was showing the um, should send bold and should send item method. So these are the methods which sort of define um, whether or not that particular endpoint is configured to receive that sync. So if it, it says all, then it should be receiving like all um, the, the items or like all the events. And if it's like just entered waiting, then it should, um, it should only trigger the, the method, which is sending the um, queue 
item for entered weeding. So this is uh, an item which is basically going to take that endpoint. It's going to take that uh, that stage, which is that enum right now. So for example, this stage is left, and I'm only requesting um, entered weeding. So this is going to be false. So moving back here, it's not going to um, send that method. It's just going to result in false. This also works. And again, as I said, I um, need to make it more um, simplified in terms of like moving it into its different tests rather than like one big test. Uh, and right now I was also not sure what other uh, tests I can write uh, <laughs> because there's not like, there's a lot of functionality in terms of it's all combined into like one one sort of thing. There's not a lot of like different things that are happening. There's a lot of one kind of different things that's happening. So I'm not sure um, what other events I can or should or like tests I can or should uh, create. And if you guys have any suggestions or comments, I would love to. So one one thing that I often do is um, is enable code coverage. And, and then look at the code coverage report um, to, to see just to see if there's any um, any areas of the code that aren't even aren't being hit at all. You know, the, the goal is may, maybe not to have some X percentage of code coverage, but just to, to look for things that that maybe aren't covered. So that, that's one idea. Um. And also, yes, I did try looking into um, um, configuration as code and that it's in, it's added to the plugin. So I'll move back to the, um, to Jenkins itself. And so if I'm correct, and I'm not really sure how like Jenkins or like config as code can help us, or it's more for, I think the users who are going to be using this plugin to go in and um, basically, like edit the configuration. Um, I'm, I, I think that's what the, the purpose is. So I'm not really sure if you know it's a way that it's going to help us. Yeah, that, that that's exactly right. It, it's for the user. Um, so so the I mean I, I think the guidance is just to to make sure that it works with with configuration as code because people might might want to use that to configure it. And most plugins do out of the box, but occasionally you you may have to do something right okay so that's um okay that was another question i had so that's weird um yeah so this one's a stupid question but <laughs> um i tend to like commit or send like pull requests when i feel that this code is working and you know so last what happened the last time when i sent the pull request then um, like would have like mentioned some changes and then I went into those changes and then I did more changes and that led to me waiting until, you know, it was working sort of perfectly for the code that was there. Um, but I think, would you guys rather me push code more often, even if it's like, it might not be working or if it's not like the cleanest piece of code, then like wait for the code to work and be sort of implemented the right way and have, um, uh like just be better and make sense i'm just i think it would be helpful for you guys to just see what i'm working on if i push more frequently but then i tend to not push because i feel that this is broken and there there you know it might not make sense my recommendation is usually push whenever you know the tests are passing right like never like break the test or or do not push even like in your pull request, right? I would definitely uh, work in those kind of like incremental incremental changes where you know that all the time kind of like the tests are passing and you have tests for the new stuff that you are adding. Um, I don't think that it's it's usually beneficial to push code that it's broken, like completely broken, unless you need like special assistance on you know on how to implement a pattern or for example how to kind of like refactor like a big chunk of code, right? Mm -hmm. So unless unless you need that kind of assistance, I would just tend to uh, push for you know the push uh, working code most of the time. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, um, small small changes are, are easier to review. So um, that 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 makes sense to me. Um, I, I I would like now that you have kind of the the base code to may, maybe be thinking about about small changes. So so you're pushing a small change for us to review, but it's working. The tests are passing, but um, when when it's approved, you're planning on on merging the pull requests. So there's there's kind of kind of two 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 times when when I push code. One one is I I want to merge it and I want people to comment on it, but 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 mm -hmm. as um, as you said, some sometimes you you specifically want feedback and it's like hey I, I'm I'm doing this approach. Curious what people think about it, and then so I might push that and, and make it a, a draft pull request and just kind of make it clear in the comments. I'm, I'm looking for feedback, maybe even on a specific section of the code so people can target that. So there, there is that kind of two, two, uh, two purposes, but you should distinguish. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I think um, the, you know, the draft PR, I think that I think that might work better. Um, because right now, there are kind of um, not really, not a lot of changes, but the last PR did not have uh, a test to it, and I was working on it, but now it does. So uh, this PR is, shouldn't be a draft PR, but I'll push it um, just so you guys can take a look and um, send comments and um, any if anything needs change. Well, I don't have any more questions that's looking really good I'm, I'm super happy with the progress so yeah keep us posted i mean if you if you move forward i will sync with viva as well offline to see you yeah. know if he if he needs help and, and i i just want to check with him like how aligned are we on, on 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 the work but yeah i think it's looking really really good and can you please send me via Slack or yeah, if you can send me via Slack, that would be great. Uh, the the URL. Do you have like an open pull request with those changes or not yet? Yes, there is a pull open pull request, and this is the this is for the last one, which was pushed mm -hmm. up three four days ago. And I have made some changes in terms of you know like the endpoint class that I was talking about, so moving that to mm -hmm. a different extract implementation and also adding tests, but and also adding three different listeners, but it's. The basic sort of idea is the same, but I'm also going to push, like, send, like, more commit to that PR, um, the all the code that I have right now by making two or three small changes. Good, great. That sounds really good. Thank you. Yeah, and I again, I don't have any more questions at the moment, um, uh, and I think that this meeting was helpful for you know, that talk about the UI. And I think if like, maybe once we have a better idea of what a user might need from a, this kind of like um, cloud event or just like an EDA architecture that might shape or change the UI. Um, so I'm also like designing, keeping that in mind that it's not very like complicated. So if the UI has to change, it it wouldn't be like complete changeover of the base code and stuff. Um, yeah, let's keep it flexible there. And yeah, awesome. Uh, yep, yeah, looking forward to to hear all the changes. And uh, yeah, I will try to join every week now. Great, thank you. Good stuff. Thank you for sharing your work, Shruti. Um, it's looking awesome. <laughs> Always impressed with what you're doing. Are you, do you feel good for the coming week, knowing what your next steps are? And you can always contact us on Slack as well, but you're solid for the next couple of days at least. Uh, yes, I think. And um, so the um, Jenkins Contributor Summit is coming up, and I think I will be presenting the Cloud Events plugin. So I think I, this is the right time to start the implementation of Jenkins is this thing. So I think the next three to four days is going to be looking into um, methods and modes of doing that. So I think I'm pretty set on um, the task for the next few days or the okay. week. Awesome. Good, I'm excited for the Contributor Summit. This should be really good. Yes, and the entire GitOps Summit and also CD Cloud. I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah, it's a good week this week. Um,
Um, okay, so if we don't have yeah. any more um, questions or last minute comments, then we can wrap up 10 minutes early. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you all for being here. Thank, thank you, you all. Work, Shruti. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.